Hello and welcome to YHTV's Flowing into Awareness with visionary and master intuitive Anatara. This is episode 13. I'm Christina Suzuma, your host of this program. Today's show is Maintaining Friendship with Our Guides. Hello, Anatara. Hello, Christina. How are you up there in the Pacific Northwest? Well, waiting for real spring to set in, but very delighted with sunny, but very cold, windy days. It's been rather exhilarating lately, <laughs> <laughs> but it's good. <laughs> yes, that Pacific Northwest weather that keeps all those evergreens growing oh, strong. Everything is so green uh, compared to most other parts of Canada. We're in full full spring, even though it's cool, and it's just alive out there. So yeah. it's yeah. pretty alive inside here too. <laughs> <laughs> and what I what I'm going to you know talk about today is a, is an is an extra it's an extra element. It's an extra dimension of aliveness for you know for our recognition that we can be aware of, that we can be present with. Um, we all have a sense of, and many of us know the names of some of our guides or our angelic, um, the angelic beings that accompany, accompany us. And sometimes it's animal, animal guides, spirit guides, whatever we want to call them. We often have a sense of of what they feel like and what they what they tend to um, address address with us and and what I mean by that is that when we have a certain need or a certain problem or or a desire of some kind we'll, we'll have a sensation a feeling of a of a guide or a group of guides stepping in to to give us information to hold us to assist us to guide us and. What, what I've been finding lately, and I know I say that a lot, is that we have this, this huge, really, it, it, it's like a bastion of, of, of helpmates, um, a, 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 a group of guides, an entourage that is with us all the time, that, that gives us moment-to-moment uh, -moment, um, information that senses what we need and, and step in. And, and sometimes when we're really, really in trouble, delivers exactly what we need to know in exactly the right, at, at exactly the right moment so that we can make a choice of some kind to, to take it the right direction or to save ourselves from danger or to simply just stop and be. But what I really want to emphasize right now is that we, you know, th these guides are not, they're not something speculative. They, they're, they're so real. And many of us don't acknowledge how vital they are to our, hmm, you know, to the, to the perfection and the harmony of how our lives can flow and how they can work. And when I think about people feeling lost and feeling alone or feeling that they haven't got um, a friend or they, they just don't know where to seek the information that they need to, to take the next step, what I, wanna, what I really want to say is that these guides, these friends, these, these co-creative masters that are all around us are ready, willing, and able to be a part of our everyday thinking and our everyday knowing and our everyday feeling. So in order to engage in this, you know, delicious and, and whole relationship with all of these, with all of these guides, with this entourage of, of friends and helpmates, it's, it's rather helpful. <laughs> it is rather important that we know how we, un how we know them, that we have a sense of how that relationship plays itself out, that we have a sense of how they speak to us, how they, how they give us information. So if we've decided, and we're pretty sure that we know that they exist and that we don't want to be living this life as one solitary individual, um, you know, little egoic person, that we want their advice and their cooperation and their excitement in creating with us. How are we going to know, how are we going to activate and enliven our relationship with them? And, and th there are as many options to do that as there are people in the world, or as, as many options to do that as there are guides 
you know, helpmates in the world. So first I'm going to talk a little bit about how to perceive them. And then I'm going to talk about a little bit more about who they are and what, what they are, you know, whatever that means. So what I'm, what I'm noticing, really noticing is that even people who don't think that they are aware of, of what they feel. And when I say what, what, what you feel, I mean, um, what does your heart feel? What does your, literally, what does your mind feel? What do you feel? And, and in, in, and how do your feelings, even, even tactile feelings inform you about your environment and about your life and about your world? And I'm noticing that even people that don't think they know anything about their feelings actually have a very uh, clear and dynamic language to describe what they do get from, from their feelings. So what is a feeling? A feeling is you know, something that you feel on your skin. A feeling is, can, can be an emotion. It can be sadness. It can be joy. It can be excitement. It can be fear. A feeling is a, a sensation or a hunch or an intuitive nudge that, that something something is available for you to listen to that or, or that you just receive information and you, you 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 know something seemingly sometimes just believing that you had a thought and and perhaps that's true but who gave you that thought where did that thought come from did you make it up with your mind did one of your entourage give you a little nudge and send you a little bit of information? Uh, was it an association with something that you heard on TV or on the radio or that you read somewhere? All of these methods, all of these, these ways of, of hearing and noticing and feeling are real and they're all valid and they're all different. They're different for each and every one of us. So we feel things. We, we sometimes stop in the middle of something because it just doesn't feel right. Or sometimes we take a big step and try something because it does feel right. Those are the feelings. Those are the, those are the sort of um, the, the larger, the grosser, um, the more dynamic ways that we feel things. But then there are all those subtle ways that I mentioned before. So we have an entourage that is here to bring us into a relationship with ourselves in and of the greater quantity of being. Maybe an odd way to describe it. Well, but what is that greater quantity of being? We're not, the, we're not isolated. I've said this many times. We are part of a whole. We are part of, of, a, of the grand perspective and existence of all that is. And as, as human beings in this time, in this time of growth and understanding and being on the earth, what we, what we want to know, what we really want to know is how we fit into that. And, and actually what we want to know is, is, is who we are. Who is this person? Who is this me? Who is this I? And, and how am I to fully receive exactly what um, you know the entourage has to help me help me learn to help help me get to help me see to help me practice so we want to know how we fit into the world and we want to know have a little bit of a um, we want we want to get some of this information from our entourage in a more specific way so that all of the choices we make and all the decisions that we make become easier and easier and easier. So that it's not just us trying to decide, it's the entourage giving us guidance from their perspective, from their places of expertise that, that make life easier for us. So the question then is, as you believe you have an entourage, do you, do you befriend them? Do you work with them? Do you interact with them? Or do you sort of just slough off the, you know, the guidance and the information as it comes to you? And one of the ways to establish, the best way that I know of, to establish a relationship with all of them <laughs> is to start with one, one sort of, of guide or one sort of extra 
personal being if you if you can identify them or just to put it out to your entourage that you would really like some assistance in accomplishing something in something specific so you just state entourage show me what to do next entourage can you guide me in this can you show me what the next step is and as you develop a, a relationship, a real communication with them, you, you ask what you, or you talk to them about what you want and what you need, and they give you guidance and they bring you the information that you're looking for. And that becomes a friendship. That becomes a community. That becomes you as an integral part of the vaster entourage. And there is no there is no difference between you and this entourage, except that in this particular set of relationships, uh, you're the human. <laughs> but but and and we are equally as important as those other beings. Um, no more important, no less important. We're all the same. So, if if we know that we have this relationship and we're good at it, and sometimes we can identify some of our entourage. There is often a curiosity about who they are or what they are. And as you become more and more familiar with how you hear from them and what they can tell you, you can actually start to ask them who they are, where they're from, and what they're like. You can ask specifics about them. You can learn from their relationship to their immediate environment as they learn through us about ours. You can learn about who they are and what they are. You can start to see the vast corners of the universe that they come from. You can start to feel and hear and use the information that they give you that comes from other planets. You can extend your, your resonance and, your, and your, um, your senses out to where they are and to where they come from. Finding that you're not just here and of the earth. And you're not just of the, you know, of this vast, beautiful atmosphere that surround us, surrounds us. And you're not just of the expanded consciousness that we know that we're a part of. But we are also able to see and feel and know other planets, other galaxies, other possibilities. Even, even We can even come into contact with things that we can't describe because there aren't any words for it. Uh, 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 places where our perceptions sort of outstrip our ability to, to feel and to describe them and to know them right now. So our entourage, you've never been without it. And actually as, as, the, um, as the growth, as the growth of humankind accelerates... We, we incorporate more and more, we accumulate more and more beings to help us. Beings that are not, not relating only to us, but could be relating to many other people that we know and many other people that we don't know. And, it, and it, when, I look at, when I look at the idea of existence, we can sort of say that it's, it's, in, a, it's in a vessel. But it's a vessel that really has no sides. It has no limits. It is infinite. There is no way to achieve um, a uh, you know sort of a, a tangible outer limit to it. And as we befriend this entourage, as we let them help us express the full extent of us, that that vessel that does support us so beautifully is easily much more easily seen as a vessel without walls, a vessel without limits, a vessel without sides. And that expansion, that safe expansion, becomes anchored in and sort of continually effervescent from within our very centers, our very, very own physical centers. So the message really is we're a lot bigger than we, we think we are. And we're even bigger than that. <laughs> so, so don't stop wherever you feel limited. <laughs> did, did you know your entourage at all or, or some of the members? Oh, yes. 
Yes, mm -hmm. yes. I, I have for since childhood, I do believe, and it gets added upon, of course. <laughs> of course. <laughs> um, but, you know, what's <sighs> interesting in, in what you're saying, uh, um, Anatara, is there is that fine line um, that we, that I've heard people say and uh, people experience, and it is a little confusing, and maybe you can shed some light uh, for those out there who might be experiencing this, where where they um, connect with their guides and um, they have to make some decisions and they have to make, um, and they're asked for direction. There is that fine line of when our mind is speaking and our guides are speaking. Mm -hmm. And that is a fine line of balance because I've had individuals make certain decisions and they said, well, this is my guidance, this is my guide, and uh, this is what it should be. And in actuality, it was really their mind speaking as opposed to their heart speaking. Um, you know, it's, 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 you know, to, to find that balance to weigh which one is, is the actual one that's speaking is, is, uh, not always easy because uh, I think there is a thought that when our guides are speaking, everything is really positive. <laughs> Even the negative sounding things. <laughs> yes, you know, because it might not go the way we want it to go mm -hmm. in life, mm -hmm. but it is the way it is. Mm -hmm. Do you know, so, that's when the mind takes over sometimes to go, well, this is what I was told or this is what came through, but it was actually our mind's thinking. So, so you, you pinpointed it perfectly when you said, you know, we're wondering about how to tell the difference between what the mind wants and what the heart wants or, or knows when we want something, it is generally the mind that's speaking through us and to us. There are different kinds of wanting, so this this makes this gray area a, a little bit grayer. <laughs> but but if we if we really feel like we need to control an outcome and 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 want to see a um, a very specific kind of outcome, then you can be fairly well guaranteed that that's your mind. If you are feeling an option and you're feeling a possibility, and you're excited about that possibility, and you're enthusiastic about what it would be like if that came to pass, that is more likely an open-ended, not-so-mindful kind of, kind of message, kind of information. The, the, you know, and this, this really is the crux, this whole um, you know, sort of uh, conundrum is really the crux of being human. We have these beautiful minds that can work as as well as our hearts do at interpreting and feeling and receiving, as long as they are working from that place. <laughs> <laughs> and, mm -hmm. and 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 really, that's that's what we're here to figure out. We're here to find out how to allow our minds to be tools of the all that is. Mm. But most of the time, the mind definitely is a tool of personality, a tool of, of, of ego, a, to, a tool of this is how I think it should be. So to answer your query or your, your comment about how do, how do we know when it's the mind and when it's the heart, it, it eventually, when you practice enough, asking, listening to what the answer is, and then feeling what that, what that answer is like. I'll, I'll say something more about that in a second. When you become familiar with the difference between what personality mind feels like and what heart information or mind feels like, then you've got your answer. And, and, and it takes a lot of practice for most of us, and the practice is part of the learning. And the practice is a huge part of realizing how the mind can be a tool of, of the soul and of the heart as well as of the mind. So that's not a, that's not a really concrete answer, but it's the only one that exists. Right. 
Well, I was going to say, I, I, I don't believe that there is any concrete answers <laughs> when we're dealing with guides and, and our minds. There is really no concrete. It's, but that was a wonderful um, way that you articulated. <laughs> Attempt. <laughs> It's a, this is what I teach in my classes, uh, and this is what I work with individual clients on. You know, where is the, the truth, and which truth do you want? Do you want the truth of what the personality is looking for, or do you want the truth of what, what the universe through your entourage can tell you? And sometimes we want the truth of what the personality can tell us because that's the most comfortable thing. And if that's what's happening, that's okay. Don't, don't beat yourself up about it. Just be present until the next time that the information is really from your heart. Mm, thank you, Anatara. Lovely. You're welcome. <laughs> Lovely. So take a breath, everybody. <laughs> that was a lot to take in. <laughs> Oh, Anatara, thank you for gifting us with such a moment with our guides and getting connected with our guides. And of course, we'd like to thank each and every one of you for joining us in this new platform of education and information. We're grateful for your continuous support and look forward to hearing on how we can serve you better. We invite you to join us every Tuesday for Magical Medical Tour at 10.30 a.m. Pacific Time, 1.30 Eastern Time, Wednesdays for Trinity of Life at 11 a.m. Pacific Time, 2 p.m. Eastern Time, followed every other week with Flowing into Awareness with Anatara. You can always connect with Anatara through her website at anatara.ca and follow her on Twitter at Anatara. Anatara has assisted many through spiritual counseling over the 25 years and throughout U.S. and Canada, and she continues to do intuitive readings that she calls angel listenings. Let's have her connect with your guides. So until next time, namaste. So if you choose to be happy, you're going to have more happy people around you. And, and you know, happiness, and mm. I always say, you know, just that simple smile, mm -hmm. it's infectious. <laughs> and you know what? Even, and this is in my book too, even if you don't feel happy about something, mm -hmm. even if you just put in a fake smile, your body's chemicals, the hormones in your body start shifting. Mm. 